it's Marley from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Wednesday, September 11th. So today we have the first quarter moon popping off in Sagittarius energy, which of course is going to give us clarity. It's going to push us into an action point, a choice point, a decision point for our future selves. Unfortunately, it usually comes out of pressure, comes out of tension, comes out of a growing pain for us to realize where it is that again, we have to kind of shit or get off the pot, make a decision, make a choice orient ourselves into a different path, into a different direction to again, try to minimize the gap between where it is that we're at and where it is that we desire to be. The Sag energy serves as a new truth, a new light on a new truth, a new perspective forming on what of course has already transpired, seeing it from the observer type of mentality and where it is now that we want to pivot, where it is that we are kind of opening ourselves up to a new path, a new quest, a new adventure, where there's a new meaning, a new purpose to some of the, let's call it effery, that has popped off as of late. Now, today is also the same day that Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, is going to clear his post-retrograde shadow period. That means that we are now nearing the fifth degree of the Virgo energy, which happens to be his rulership. And this is going to put us in brand new foreign territory. This is going to bring clarity, going to bring insight, going to bring solutions. So as the first quarter moon in Sag has us kind of focused on what we can do in this present moment here and now to kind of orient to the path to the direction that we want to find ourselves ending up in, the Mercury and Virgo energy in this fifth degree is new insight new revelation on the smaller, finer details of what is going to make up this greater, grander whole. The Virgo energy is planning and strategizing what we have power and control over in this present moment on what we need to do to bridge the gap again, from where it is that we're at to where it is that we desire to be. So the Sag energy gives us the big picture, gives us optimism and confidence that as long as we can fixate on this goal, this outcome, then Mercury in Virgo energy now at the fifth degree is providing us a new opportunity to kind of take some of the fragmented ideas that we've had, piece them together, revealing a greater, grander solution, greater, grander plan, path, if you will, on how it is that we are going to get there. Today is also a residual energy harvesting day. Um, if you haven't listened to the Ascension forecast that I put out for this week, we're going to recommend you do so. Uh, just because some major events that literally has shaped who it is that we are as the humankind here today popped off on a specific year, on a specific day, such as today, there is this reverberation of pain, of trauma wounds that, again, the not so nice dark force energies get a kick off of. And so there is a lot of emotion rising to the surface. There's a lot of instability. There's a lot of pressure and the moon, while we hit this first quarter moon in Sag, we do see the moon go void, of course, at 8.21 p.m. And we lock into Capricorn energy at 10.38 p.m. And the transition from Sag energy to Capricorn energy always feels like we hit a brick wall. It's like our mood just shifts into a serious, more somber type of tone because, of course, we're dreaming the biggest dream possible. We're as optimistic and confident as we could possibly get in the Sag energy. We need to come back down to reality in the Capricorn energy. If we dream the dream in Sag energy, the Capricorn energy is like, okay, let's cut the bullshit. Let's see what is actually obtainable, actually achievable. And what do we have to build? What kind of structures, what kind of foundations, what kind of plan, path, strategy do we actually have to build in order to bring this new dream into physical manifestation, into this materialistic realm? And so again, we kind of move into general foreman type of mood and attitude in that Capricorn energy. It is the manifestor energy, but we have to be able to have a structured plan, a structured vision really come alive in our mental plane before we can actually take action, make moves in the physical realm to build said structure, said foundation for dreams to actually come to life. So we're definitely going to feel a major shift when we move into that Capricorn energy. And we also have a beautiful interaction between Mercury and Mars taking place 
the minute that we move into that Capricorn energy, which is going to be a totally different vibe. We'll talk about that when we get there. So of course, with all of that being said, there's a lot going on. We have a lot of shifting to do, a lot of insight coming in, a lot of pieces to kind of put together, a lot of epiphanies that still have to kind of pop off before we're going to see the path, the vision kind of clear for us, for us to see the options, the opportunities that we actually have right now to move on, to move forward. So out of those nine different aspects, seven of them are going to involve the moon. 2.06 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, the moon is going to get into the boxing ring, square off with the sun, the moon being in Sag energy, the sun being in Virgo energy, a square highlighting tension and conflict. This is what gives us our first quarter moon phase. Now, a square highlights the growing pains. It highlights, emotionally speaking, in Sag energy, where we're futuristically focused with all kinds of different goals and visions and dreams and ambitions that we are optimistic and confident that as long as we can visualize it, as long as the hopes and wishes and energies of inspiration and excitement can hold true, that we're actually going to be able to achieve this. The wind kind of gets knocked out of those particular sails by the sun in Virgo energy because we know that we need to be logical and practical and rational. We know that we need a plan. We know that we need to take action. We know that we need to make adjustments. We know that it's going to require a lot of physical work in order for us to actually bring some of these goals, these hopes, these wishes, these dreams to life. So where emotionally speaking, we're kind of hyped up just thinking that as long as we can visualize the dream, that that's enough, that we're going to align with that. And it's just magically going to happen and appear. The sun, of course, shining a bright light on the Virgo energy is where we have to put the physical elbow grease in to actually creating a situation, a circumstance, a foundation, a structure in our physical realm to actually house said dreams. It's not easy peasy, doesn't happen overnight, requires way more mental focus, way more physical energy from us than, again, the moon and Sag would prefer that we actually need to have. We want hopes, wishes, and dreams to be enough. So again, this is the first quarter moon phase. It always happens out of tension. It always happens out of this pressure because it's highlighting where emotionally speaking, we're so far into the future, kind of living in la la land, thinking that everything is peachy keen. As long as we can visualize it, we can manifest it. When realistically speaking, the sun in Virgo energy is like, yeah, that's a great vision. That's a great dream. But how do you actually plan to bring this baby to life? The moon and Sag then going to directly oppose and set across from Jupiter, its ruler. So Jupiter, he is the planet of growth and expansion, beliefs, abundance and blessings. He's in Gemini energy, his opposition. So Jupiter's not in a great place in this Gemini energy. This is why we're feeling the tug of war. This is why we're on the fence about a lot of things. Of course, Jupiter in Gemini energy, the whole point there is to expand upon our mental plane really grow upon some ideas, some options, some opportunities that we've been percolating on. We need to learn more. We need to research more. We need to talk about it. We need to verbalize it. We need some sort of energy exchange. And of course, the Sag energy is about belief, hopes, wishes, and dreams, everything that is non-tangible, if you will, while the Gemini energy is about what we know, the information, the actual facts of the matter. And so emotionally speaking, coming into this opposition with Jupiter, we're not feeling so hot. We're not feeling so great. We're not feeling so optimistic. Again, we're coming out of this first quarter moon where the tension, the conflict between where it is that we're at and where it is that we desire to be is so overwhelming that now we realize that we need more than just hopes, wishes, and dreams. We need actual information, an actual plan, an actual strategy. And because Jupiter magnifies everything, our headspace is just going to feel like it's in a vice grip because we are desperately wanting to choose, wanting to decide. And here Here's the thing. We're in a completion stage right now. We're wrapping things up. So to think about the future, yes, it's nice and shiny over there, but we have to wrap so many loose ends up before we can even pursue that, that the list of things to do, it gets very overwhelming. And even more than that, the Gemini energy really has this, I'm going to say peak curiosity pushing us to see where it is that we could do things differently, where we can integrate some wisdom and knowledge into our day-to-day -day lives, into that plan into that strategy. But what we know right now 
is that we don't have all the information and the details. We don't have the clarity that we want. We don't really have enough information to base our decisions off of. And let me just repeat this again. We all need to be working harder and leaning further into being okay with not knowing. We are not supposed to know. OK, so again, this is why you have to be present. You have to trust yourself. You have to really understand the signs, the symbols, the confirmations, the validations that the universe is sending you. And we really need to lean into maybe taking a step, maybe choosing, maybe deciding without having the full picture, the full information, the full knowledge. And that's a hard thing for a lot of people to get behind now. Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money. She's in her rulership in this Libra and energy. Again, the tendency there is to want to stay in the shallow end, really think that everything is rainbows and butterflies. We're in love with love. We want everybody to be happy. We want everybody to get along. We want everything to be peachy keen. Venus is about to make a very harsh interaction with Saturn, the Lord of Karma, who is retrograde in Pisces energy. Again, another reason why we're in a wrap up completion cycle. This particular interaction is going to lead to such pressure, such tension, such difficulty in seeing our responsibilities, especially to other people, clearly. Meaning we have a sense of duty, a sense of responsibility that we think that we have to fulfill because we think that other people deserve this from us. We think that we, we owe that much to these people when realistically speaking, we're over exaggerating our actual responsibility to them. Let me also just say we are in a situation right now. Again, with the nodes of the moon, Venus rules over the south node in Libra that we are karmically learning right now to distance ourselves and create, let's call it a safer energy exchange in our relationship dynamics. Why? Because our natural disposition and tendency is to people please, to put other people's wants, needs, and desires before our own. And when it comes to the responsibility that we feel to do right by other people, by others to do whatever it is that we feel um, we technically quote unquote owe them. It's wrong because it's at a disservice to ourselves and we cannot be acting out of a disadvantage, a disservice to ourselves any longer. That would be totally going against this last year and a half, almost two years now of karmic life lessons and realizing what is ours to own and be accountable and responsible for and what is not. And we have this, let's call it energy tie to certain people in our lives right now that we think we owe them the world. We think that we're the only ones that can help them and save them when realistically speaking, it's a distraction from helping ourselves. Now, this is not a great time to make any kind of serious decisions about relationship dynamics, about our responsibilities to certain people with certain matters, about legal options, about money, worth, and value. Okay, we need to take a step back. We're restricted. That's what Saturn is. He's restriction. We are restricted from making those types of decisions, especially because we're not seeing things clearly. Again, the more that Mercury kind of moves through this Virgo energy, gaining a little bit of distance away from that fourth degree that he went retrograde at, the more clarity and insight we're going to get. But it ain't happening here today. The moon is going to try and beautiful interaction with Chiron, the wounded healer who was retrograde in Aries energy. This is fire on fire action. We love fire on fire action. It helps us to burn away the not so nice thoughts and emotions, the heavier gunk, if you will, in order to regenerate, rejuvenate the spark, the fire, the flame that needs a little bit of pep back in our step. Emotionally speaking, of course, the Sag energy has us thinking big, thinking futuristically, thinking optimistically, thinking confidently. And because Chiron is about this new version of self, this new image, we are definitely seeing ourselves from a stronger perspective, a more healthier point of view, especially coming out of that tough interaction between Venus and Saturn. We're starting to realize what we need to be doing for ourselves, what we need to be doing to maintain our happiness, our health and wellness at this particular juncture. And so when we step back to see ourselves from this new perspective, from this new set of eyes, this new version of self with new wants, needs, and desires, understanding how much we've been able to grow and heal in a short amount of time, that definitely puts a little bit of a different perspective on the whole 
what do I need to do to make other people happy, even though it would make me unhappy to do those exact things. So again, it's kind of adjusting our perspective on the responsibilities that we actually have to other people. And mostly the responsibilities that we have to honor our own damn selves, to heal ourselves, to definitely evolve ourselves before we go throwing the life raft towards other people. We have to save ourselves first. Again, the whole mask falling down on the airplane, put that shit on yourself, start breathing, make sure that you're able to function so before you can help other people. That's the whole jam here. The moon is then going to make a very harsh interaction with Uranus, the great awakener, who of course is retrograde in Taurus energy. And the whole mission there is to highlight and illuminate where it is that we're overly attached to, connected to the old the old people, the old places, the old things, the old possessions, the old timeline, the old version of self. Now, again, Uranus's time in this Taurus energy, especially retrograde, is to illuminate where it is that, again, we're kind of holding on to the past where we're beating a dead horse and yet praying for change, but yet not pivoting when change knocks on the door. So emotionally speaking, we're not feeling so great. We're not feeling so clear headed. We're not so let's going to let's let's call it. We're not in such the great perspective acting as the observer to see where it is that we're the own damn problem. We're so close to ourselves, to the situation, to the problem right now that we can't see the forest past the trees. And so emotionally speaking, we're actually creating more anxiety, more confusion than there needs to be because we're complicating situations because of the resistance to the changes that we know that we need to make. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money. Suddenly, we have a totally different perspective on what we actually want, need, and desire for our own damn selves to make our day-to-day -day lives better, our routines more stable, our relationship dynamics a little bit happier, our financial situation a little bit more prosperous. We're starting to realize and understand what it is that we need to do for ourselves first and foremost in order for us to be operating from a full cup before we go ahead and try to fill up everyone else's cup. So we're definitely going to have a major shift in our mood and our attitude and our perspective on what it is now that we need to be doing for ourselves first and foremost. The moon in Sag energy is going to get into the boxing ring and square off with Neptune, who of course is retrograde at the final degrees of his rulership in Pisces energy. This is the last aspect that the moon is going to make before going void, of course. And a square is highlighting the growing pains, the tension, if you will. And let me break it down to you this way. The moon in Sag is so futuristically focused, so optimistic, so confident that as long as we can hold a vision, a goal, a dream, that that is enough. Neptune, on the other hand, who is retrograde, meaning that we can't think that far ahead. We can't even gain intuitive insight on where it is that we want to end up because there's too many fragments of the old world, the old karmic chapters that are still in limbo that need to be wrapped up. Neptune's whole point is that we can't we can't continue to avoid life. We can't continue to sweep things under the rug. Yes, we all want to move on. We all want to move forward, but we have to clean up the debris of the past or else that is going to come back in an evil kind of way. When we find ourselves very happy, very settled here in a couple of months, the past is going to come back to bite us in the ass. We don't want that. We have to deal with life as it is, not for the way that we wished it would be. And so emotionally speaking, we're projecting ourselves so far into the future that we're missing the responsibilities that we have now, which is to wrap up the chapters of the old. Again, the square highlights tension and conflict where it is that part of us is one place, not in agreement with other parts of self, the vision, the goal, the dream that essentially we're fixated on right now cannot begin until we clean up the loose ends of the past. 8.21 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the moon goes void, of course. This is when things are shaky, things are unstable, things are uncertain, but a beautiful thing happens. The moon, while still in this Sag energy, makes a beautiful interaction with Pluto, the great transformer himself, who is now retrograde at the final degrees of Capricorn energy. We have the moon and Pluto coming together to empower us to realize the friction, the tension, the conflict, the growing pains, and understand where it is that we can override that particular narrative, that particular perspective, that 
particular emotion. And when we do that, we're turning our pain into power. When we do that, we're turning the darkness into light. When we do that, we are taking the old version of self with all the fears, doubts, and insecurities. And we are basically flipping the script in a much more positive way. Again, the optimism and confidence coming through with that Sag energy is definitely overriding the negative narrative, the negative Nancy disposition, mood, and attitude that we get from Pluto being in this Capricorn energy and at 10 38 p.m eastern standard time the moon shifts into the Capricorn energy and we're definitely going to feel like we hit a brick wall there's definitely this anchoring energy because it's an earth energy we're coming back down to earth we're not up in la la land we're a lot more logical rational let's call it practical in realizing where it is that maybe we got a little bit too ahead of ourselves and that is when essentially we shift moods and attitudes. We are, we are a little bit more serious and somber, but here's the beautiful thing. Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves. Mercury, who is clearing his post retrograde shadow period, which means that he's up to snuff, he's up to speed, he's operating at his optimal strength in his rulership, mind you, in Virgo energy. This is about analyzing, reevaluating, um, this is about using discernment. This is about planning, strategizing, improvements, adjustments in order to free us up to actually pursue something new. Mercury is going to sextile, beautiful interaction with Mars, the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desires, even our anger. He's in cancer energy, so we're hella defensive, hella protective hella putting ourselves in a situation to only take action that is going to further secure our safety security and stability in our emotional realm in our home in our health and wellness as well now here's the thing mercury and mars our headspace and our vitality our solar spirit our action energy is definitely going to trigger a certain level of mental awareness that we have not been operating from for a very long time. Thank you, Mercury Retrograde, for that. Suddenly, we are making some really quick realizations, really quick decisions. We are just snapping our fingers. Everything is starting to make sense. But here's the thing. We have a clarity, a sense on what we need to prepare what we need to prepare to fight for, defend, protect in our futuristic vision. We are kind of feeling a little bit more inspired, a little bit more excited for what we have to do to move on, to move forward. We are starting to see, again, a lot more clarity, a lot more ability to see the actions that we could take in this present moment to further secure our safety, our security, our stability in this present moment where things got a little bit choppy right we're we're now moving into eclipse energies we're now you know moving towards that equinox energy there is a lot of instability there but we're being launched catapulted if you will into a new realization on what it is that we want to do we want to pursue the options of action that we actually have available to us at this particular time so our headspace definitely going to feel this rapidness um, restlessness take over our physical body. We have ants in our pants in a big way. In our communication, we may be a little bit rushed or hurried to hurry up and figure it out or hurry up and decide or hurry up and choose. At the same time, we are finding it, I'm going to say a little bit easier to understand that the ideas that we're having, how to actually put them into action how to how to take action how to put them into motion so that we can start again kind of moving away from this stagnancy that we have found ourselves in and start gaining a little bit of momentum towards this new goal this new vision this new aha moment this new epiphany so where we were confused as f about a, a certain situation and circumstance just a month ago now we're feeling like we have an answer we have a new insight to explore a new avenue for us to do, for us to pursue. And that in itself is hella refreshing. <laughs>